If you can't keep up with the updates coming out for your Google Home products, well then you should probably just send them to me and I'll make good use of them. That, or you can spend a couple of minutes here seeing all the latest updates for your Google Home products. And I'm going to show you a brand new interface for the Google Home smart displays that I'm pretty sure you've never seen. Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and quite frankly, it's been an exciting and busy couple of weeks here on Automate Your Life and we just had new products from Google in the past week, we had new products from Amazon. But if you have kids in your home, you're probably the most excited about Disney Plus coming on to the Google Home smart displays and the Chromecast devices through voice control. You will be able to call up any of the Disney Plus content on your smart displays or your Chromecasts and there's an additional service available called Join. This is showing up on many people's lists of video content that they can connect to the Google Home application. Now that's a health-related application, so clearly not as exciting as Mando. I even wore the right shirt for that. I know we saw all the new devices from Amazon and their Echo Show that can move, but I still think Google is ahead of everyone when it comes to smart displays and the interface. I just find them crisp and clean and and clear and there's always new features being added to them. One of my favorite features in the Google Home system in general has always been the gentle wake up and this allows you to get your lights started over an extended period of time but now Google rolled out the ability to do that on any set of lights in your home. It's not just Philips Hue anymore. And the new alarm management panel on the smart displays gives us access to that feature and more within our alarms. There's also a brand new sunrise feature that you can enable on the smart displays that wakes them up. So brightening the display maybe brightens your day a little. Now, I've been working home for a while now, in case you guys haven't noticed that. And one of the things with that is that I've never really gotten into a really structured routine. And Google is actually helping with a new feature they just rolled out. This is called the new workday routine. And the first time you find it will be the next time you go into your routine section inside of the Google Home application. And I didn't find a need personally to customize a lot of this, but there is an entire ability to customize every different time period, plus add your own time periods to the whole workday routine. And it's intended to get you out of your chair at different times of the day. Make sure you eat lunch, do things like that. And the only thing I found that I needed to add was my daily dose of T-Swift. Don't judge you guys, everybody needs a good cry, okay? And speaking of crying, I've been crying about this for a little bit and many of you have too because the Nest application has always had the ability to sense our whether or not we're home whether or not we're away and they've been using the different devices now a little while ago we saw the Nest protects come into the Google Home application and then disappear and that would be a critical part of this as many of the Nest devices can actually sense whether you're home or away. Why I'm bringing this up is because there's little rollouts going on of the new home and away presence sensing and the routines associated with that. So you may find this again in inside of your routine section. If you just keep having a look every couple of days here and this will give you the ability to trigger things on and off based on you leaving the home. And this was all signified a couple of weeks ago. Actually, I got an email from Google and it said the device access console is ready. And what is that? Well, it's actually a pretty big deal because it allows developers as well as individuals to go and start to create integration with their different products. Now I tried and went to, or I tried to use the system and honestly I hope one of you teaches me how to use it because I was just confused. But that does signify the changing of the tide with routines that are triggered by different devices and there's a number of components coming together honestly i thought we were going to see it at google's event the just this past wednesday at the start of this video i promised to show you a smart display interface and usually i make pretty good on those promises so here is a brand new nest hub max with 32.24.0 
as the software version on it. Just to give you an idea, mine are currently on version 29 and I wasn't able to get an answer for how this individual managed to get this interface on there. It does an insanely better job at organizing everything we can do with smart displays and giving us the quick controls a lot quicker. And we didn't even see if there were additional menus or additional options available to us because this version is clearly not ready. It's skipping a few versions from what we have today and therefore a lot will be added and maybe some things will be subtracted before it actually gets to us. But you can see what a really huge change this will be. There's another change on the smart displays and this is a really small one but it points to some future capabilities and you can get a little more out of them today. See, inside of the Google Home application you can actually add a number of your own personalized places and when you do that and you name them a certain way then you can always ask for navigation to my places. But down in the lower corner of this you can actually see the starts of the waypoints interface. So this would give us the ability to kind of plan out a route, go about our day and go to the different places that we maybe have on our list of things to do. I guess that's if we're ever allowed to go outside. Earlier this year, I was looking at joining the Android 11 beta, and while I'm glad I didn't because there were still too many bugs, I am glad I have it now because of the new control panel that you get when you're holding the power button for just a second. I have found a number of specific controls within there, and I'll give you a couple examples here of how I'm using it instantly. Now, number one, I can skip between the different homes in the Google Home app, so if you wanna create multiple interfaces, you can actually do that really quickly. The other thing that you can do is for things like my vacuum, you know, I never had the dock function available in the Google Home application, but it's here in the controls and I can quickly see my Nest uh, cameras and it's great if you stick a Nest speaker on there because you can change the volume really quickly. Plus, all obviously, all of the controls of lights are really quick and effective at any moment. I also really like the fact that there's a quick way to get into the Google Home application. If I need more out of that device, you can get right into the settings for anything that you have in that console. Now, I'm not really an Easter eggs kind of guy, but there's actually a way to capture cats on Android 11. And this is a bit of a weird thing, but once you do this little sequence, you can go ahead and put out a water bowl and a toy and you'll attract a cat and you just sit there and collect these different icons of cats. One of the biggest features that rolled out for the Pixels on Wednesday was the ability to share your screen with Google Duo. So this is a huge feature add because you're going to, on the call, be able to share whatever you're doing on your screen. Another thing that was absolutely huge was the Hold For Me feature and that can distinguish between between people talking and you being talked to by a machine and then once it kind of recognizes that you can put that service on hold and it'll come back to you when you're ready to speak with somebody actually. One of the ways that I hate losing time is to have too many notifications on my phone or on my devices and Google's actually revamped the notification section in the Google Home application exactly to this effect. Now, what's really nice through this is, yes, you can manage all these different types of notifications, but you can also manage whether or not you wanna have a quick link to the setting that caused that notification uh, on the notifications you're getting. And this has allowed me to manage it down really quickly and effectively to what I want. Xiaomi has actually put out a speaker here with the Google Assistant on board, but it's kind of borrowing design points from everyone. It kind of looks like a Sonos or a Bose to me. And then on top of that, it's using a blue ring on the top like Amazon. So it's all over the place, but it retails around $55. And if you are someone who wants to look at something from Xiaomi, you've got a lot of Xiaomi devices, this might be an interesting one for you to look at. With all of this going on, it's fantastic for our existing devices, but there are a number of new devices. And if you haven't seen our video with additional insight from Google directly, and all of the new products and features that were launched on this Wednesday, then you need to check out the video that's on screen. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching. And of course, don't hate, automate.